I knew what I had to do. Didn't know how to do it. There's an old man who lives in the tree. Wakey, wakey. Russell, Russell, Russell. Russell, 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 Russell. Russell. Hmm? Little, little, whoa, 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 ba, ba, Ah, much better. I'd almost forgotten how to speak the common language after all these years alone. Wise as she is, mother isn't much for conversation. But it's good to see you here, messenger. The first to arrive, bravo. As you know, I am the Watcher. So I did not know that you were the Watcher. You must have received the signal. Which forest do you journey from? And where is your animal companion? Are they an insect of some sort? Hello, my tiny friend. You can come out now. My worm? <laughs> Um, upon closer inspection, perhaps you are not a messenger. Are the messengers, like, the wizards from Lord of the Rings, like Tom Bombadil? Or not Tom Bombadil, but, um, like Gandalf the Grey, and whatever that guy's name, something brown. Ra Razadash, or whatever his name was, the brown. Is it like that? <laughs> Then, how did you traverse these wilds? Wild, woods wild as they are. <laughs> I have a secret. I see. Still, you found your way through the underground maze and overcame the tricks of the wildwood. Navigation is in your blood, dear girl. You remind me of someone you know. In my youth across the sea, there was a young woman. Hmm? Ah, never mind simply passing impossibility. It's probably my grandma. Have we got a glimpse of the messengers yet? I wonder, which will mother choose? Ah, yes, I suppose this ritual will be a mystery to you. Messengers, watchers, saplings, animal companions. It's all very ancient and fascinating. Let's say we take a walk and I can give you the entire oral history. A humor, an old man I haven't spoken to anyone in decades. Sure, mate. When Mother Tree has reached the end of her thousand year growth, the current watcher must put her to sleep using the flames of the wildwood. Her life has its carpets the entire first, spurring a millennia of new growth. So that a giant fire comes by, alright? Oh, hello there. Messenger nape of barns and vulture. Travel the far we bring sapling. I will be watcher. You're so welcome. I'm just in the middle of a yawn. Please go and wait by mother and we'll be with you shortly. Squawk! <laughs> the smoke from mother also acts as a signal to the forest tribes, which each send messenger, bearing a sapling from their village. Once the messengers reach Mother and plant their saplings, they must recite the 87 stanzas of the Rhyme of the Wildwood. 87 stanzas? What are they? Freaking Ents? Oh, more messengers! Tidings Watcher! And to you too, small one! It is no surprise to see you here! Ricard from the Birdwood Forest, my foxy friend and I are ready for the ritual! Cholmak of the Evergreen and my bear! Truly it's an honor to be in Mother's embrace! Okay, I feel cozy already. Welcome messengers and woodland companions. Please gather at mother. I'm almost done regaling our friend here of our traditions. With our traditions. After the saplings are planted, mother will choose one of them to embody her regrowth. The messenger who provided the sapling will become the new watcher and their tribe will protect Mother throughout her growth. As each Watcher grows old, another from their tribe will take over, so that the Elder Watcher may go home and live out their days in their village. As you may have guessed, 
I am the final watcher of my line, and I am well ready to return to my village. Mm. I wonder if they still make those toasted bananas back home. Oh, our final messenger. You're just in time for toasted bananas. I mean, uh, the ritual. Phew. Cherub is exhausted, but Cherub is sapling. Definitely original sapling. Uh, I'm Cherub here of the Coniferous. Cherub will surely never be chosen as watcher, but excited to attend. A glorious day in the Wildwood. Hello, beardless one. Hi again, buddy. Oh, good to be. Everyone is here. It's time to wake mother. Let us gather. Mother, it is time to awaken. Your children have traveled from farthest forest, redwood, barrens, evergreen, coniferous. And I, your watcher, ready for my rest. We gather here to begin your rebirth. Messengers, produce your saplings. The strongest, most beautiful specimens of your forests. <laughs> Awkward. Let us plant them and stir mother from her slumber. Awkward. But a sapling's a sapling. How oh, the ghost lily likes the attention. The ghost lily grew. Hmm. A ghostly glow. What a strange new sapling. Mother's choice is clear. Messengers, the next watcher is. Cherub of the Coniferous. Ah? Uh, eh? Oh? What? 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 I know. A little hooter. Um. Cherub is so confused. Why is he the watcher? Cherub isn't good at watching anything. It must have been the sapling you give Cherub. Special sapling. Cherub isn't special. Cherub wants to go home. Good, good. The ritual was a success. Mother Cherub chose sapling and thus he becomes the new watcher. He may not feel ready, but Mother knows best. The mere act of being chosen will start him down the path. Mother is in no rush. I'm glad you could join us for the ritual. Perhaps you'd like to say goodbye to the other messengers, and then I can show you the path out. Do I get a hug from the bear again? Hi, bear. No hug. Ho ho ho! We're a bit relieved we were chosen, honestly. We love exploring, but we're not as happy staying in one place. Mother must have known that. She's so wise. Ah, well, it would have been nice to be chosen, but Mother does what's best for the entire forest. We'll stick around for a bit in case Cherub needs any help. What a choice, Cherub, but respect it. Mother will grow taller than the sky. Want to witness? It sounds like the other messengers will be sticking around a, a bit longer. I'll soon be making my journey home once I've showed Chirp the ropes. May I show you the path out of the Wildwood? Great, follow me. Chirp, please join us. It's time for your first lesson. O okay. The 
watcher must learn the language of the trees. Watch carefully, Cherub. Russell, Russell, Russell. The forest favors you this day. Please, take this token. Yeah, nice. It was destiny that you should come here. And with this, you will never lose your way in the wildwood. I'm glad you could join us, and thank you for helping Cherub replace his lost sapling. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> you can't fool a watcher, Cherub. You'll understand one day. Mother sees all, and she still chose you. Worry not. Go, little one. I'm sure we'll see you soon. And give my best to your grandmother. Thanks. How did you know about my grandma? Travel safe and pray for Cherub. So where do we end up? New growth. Path back to the grassland, just across the river. But there's like a giant house over here. Whose house is this? I wonder. After being let out of the wildwood, the little cartographer arrived at a strange building hidden amongst the trees. Wait a second. She followed her curiosity inside and picked up the first book that she saw. Just then, the story tender entered. Huh? Ah, there's that darn book. I've been looking everywhere. It's a good one, eh? I was thoroughly riveted. Yeah, no, no, we need a new voice. It's a good one, I. Oh, I was thoroughly riveted. Couldn't put it down. And then when I did, oh, I forget where I put it. Ghost of these bear hugs, farting sheep. What an adventure! Well, clearly you have good taste. Welcome to the story chalet. We're not easy to find. You must have a nose for knowledge. I am the story tender. And I take care of our rather mm, unique library. You'll find lots to love here. And our stories are always changing. In fact, they've been changing rather quickly of late. I was just in the middle of sorting some books, but these old bones could use a break. Excuse me. Let me show you how things work around here. This is the desert wing of the chalet. Not to be confused with a desert wing. A dessert wing, which is sadly still under construction. Like I mentioned, each wing contains stories related to a specific area of the world. Oh, I recently started reading a good one in this very room. It was about an old lady searching for a granddaughter in the desert. Oh, I know, right? What a good premise! When I left off, the granny was getting a bit exhausted. Oh, I can see you excited about learning. Oh, to be a curious young mind again. Well, off you go then. How about these books? I'll be in the writing room. Just let me know if I can be of any assistance. Searching the sands. The desert could be a harsh place and was home to a resilient nomadic people. The shifting sands were a way of life, often confining, confounding the flora and fauna. And within the tumult, a wizened woman searching for a granddaughter. They had been separated by a storm, storm and yearned to be together. First floor. Destination desert. There was sand as far as the eye could see. 
It was inescapable between your sheets, on your skin, in your sandwiches. When the sandstorms were out, their most fierce whole camps would be buried. Routes leading back to the grassland and other neighboring regions would disappear. These paths could be found again by intrepid adventurers, or at times, unwitting wanderers. <coughs> a book lies open on the desk. Nearby, a typewriter taps steadily on its own. Spooky. The observer is above. Their people served an essential function to chart the lands, noting any changes and shifts over time immemorial. Ah, so we were an observer. They traveled by airship, quietly observing from high above, rarely disturbing the people below. Their navigation skills were peerless, passed down through the collective memory of their ancestors. Simply, they were cartographers by trade and by blood. That's what I am, a cartographer. The, Ignatic, um, the Ignat Enigmatic Story Chalet. Deep in the forest, in an unmemorable corner, sits the Story Chalet. This peculiar building can be tricky to find when you're looking for it, but easy to stumble across when you aren't. It houses a remarkable library of books overseen and cataloged by a story tender. These mysterious tomes are endlessly updated by an unseen hand documenting stories and cultures around the world. The building itself is an architectural marvel, with a deceptively simple facade that obscures its more sophisticated interior. Hey there! Welcome to the writing room. This is where all of the stories are created. No. This is where all of our stories are created, though I can't tell you how. It's not a secret, I just don't know. No one does. That thingamajig over there just churns them out and has been for as long as anyone can remember. My job is to tend to the stories, and that's good enough for me. If you'd like to know more about the story, shall I? This is the room for it. I'll keep some of my other favourites here too. When in doubt, ask a book. Second floor. Go back downstairs. Basement 2. The Gathering of Magic Boots. The Grasslanders found endless ways of improving their lives through clever applications of plants. Using an amalgam, uh, amalgam of different rubber plants, they created a new type of footwear. These magic boots could be stretched to fit any size foot and raised to the running speed of its wearers. The last known pair weighed someone bold enough to support them. Somewhere in the grassland wing of basement two of the story chalet. Read it again? Nah. I think I'm moving a little faster now. Nomads of the grasslands. Nomads by nature, the people of the grassland typically migrate once a generation. They travel to barren lands bearing seeds and ancient irrigation techniques. The grasslanders are deeply attuned to their flora, listening to the voice of the earth and coaxing its growth through song. By the time the next generation migrates, the land they leave behind is a fertile paradise. Popular grassland campfire songs. Good night, sleepy sheep. Oh, good night, sleepy sheepy. Sympathy for Red Devil. Ganga style. <laughs> Ballad of the Sour Potato. Traditional. Begonia Bop. Monkar's Mourn for Melody. Hey there, Dahlia. Hey there, Delilah. <laughs> All right, so we can go here. Let's 
basement one. Basement one. Why can't I? The little cartographer. With her fancy new boots, the little cartographer knew that nothing could stop her. She would head out to cross the river and find her way to the desert where she had hoped her grandmother waited her. Well, that's basically telling me exactly what I need to do. Across that river. Oh, just like that. Trail to grassland. Return to grassland? Yeah. Welcome back, little wood sprite. Oh, welcome back, little wood sprite. We were worried when you disappeared. Did you happen to see the ghost, Lily? Mm, yeah, no. Oh, well, I figured I'd ask. Mocha will be sad to hear it. I think he was still holding out hope. But everyone will be glad to have you back. Though, I know that look in your eye. Are you on your own secret mission now? Yeah. Hmm, you're looking for somewhere sandy? Oh, I don't know such a place, but sometimes Mo the Shepherd arrives home covered in sand. Ah, so it left me... back where I was, okay. Saw a young sapling. Tell me you saw the ghost, Lily. Nope. No. no! <laughs> His face is awesome. I'm sorry, I was just so excited when it appeared. And since you disappeared right after I thought you may have found it. Ah well. It will bloom again eventually. Well, she was a lot more north than I expected. Wow, she's teaching the kids again. Welcome back. I'm glad to see you're safe. Perhaps you can regale the students with the travels sometime. The ghost only went to the afterlife. I want to be an inventor like you. Did you find any cool plants that we learned about the pentapoppy? <laughs> bah. Wake up. 
Ah. My sheep. Have you seen my sheep? Wait. Oh, my sheep are here. Why did it wake me up? Hmm. Where do I get Sandy? I don't tell my dad, but I don't know. Sometimes I just wake up that way. Maybe I can show you when I'm asleep. I'm wide awake now, but there are probably some plants that can knock me out. But I'm no plant expert. Alright, so the plant expert is Monkar, or... Do I read the book? My toes are very wrinkled. Maybe Mo knows where Mo goes. He should be with the sheep. That's gonna be in that book. Alright, a thick notebook filled with handwritten notes about different plants. New beast. You're certainly making good time in them, but you must be tired from running around so much. Children, what plants can we use to help our friends sleep soundly tonight? I know, I know, pick me! It's not a competition, everyone can answer. I think each of the children has something to tell you. When you gather the plants, put them inside this pot. Pick me! Dozing daisies! They slowly nod and make everyone around them tired. There are a bunch planted near the circle road. Slumber stalk. Its stems have a gentle fragrance that makes everyone sleepy. It grows in the center of a field of yellow leaves. Pick me, whisper grasp. When the wind blows through, it sounds like a bunch of people going shh. I saw some at the mouth of the river. Oh, I see. So we gotta, okay, the first one was, all right, uh, I don't have enough, oh, there I go, I do not have enough. Ah, here we go. Dozing daisies. You found them. Don't show them to me, though. I want to stay late. Alright. Slumbershock grows in a field of yellow leaves. You know, like the ones that Auntie Tuya tends. <laughs> I got kicked out. Alright, and the last one was at the mouth of the river. So I just have to go all the way across. Thank you. 
how to move the uh, trot around, make it a little bit easier. The children are also knowledgeable about plants. I'm so proud. Wide wake. Flowers for me and the sheep. Oh, a couple. More flowers? You're really. <laughs> Out like a light. And he's sleepwalking. And the sheep follow. <laughs> Would you like some more tea, Penelope? Well, we've definitely arrived to the desert. <laughs> 